Okay, so we will now show to you the complete solution on how to answer the given problem number one. So on our given problem, we have our general uh, differential equation, which is m of x, y, dx plus n of x, y, dy is equal to zero. And uh, we, on that given problem, also define that we have this phi of x, y, that we have this phi of x, y, which is an integrating factor to be multiplied in our general differential equation so that we will arrive on what we call x of differential equation. So our equation now becomes m of x, y, phi of x, y, dx plus n of x, y multiplied by phi of x, y, dy is equals to zero. Okay, so, and uh, this exact differential equation now uh, will now lead to us to the solution of f of x, y is equal to k. Now, um, let's assume that these terms of this uh, given, of this uh, exact differential equation, let us assume this that this is an... Uh, what we call m star okay i'll have to erase first this one then as well as the uh the n of x y phi x y let us assume also that this is n star so um as we going now to define the exactness of this exact differential equation we have to uh, define it by the partial derivative of m star over the partial derivative of y is it must be equal to the partial derivative of n n star over the partial derivative of x so here is the process so our partial of m star over partial derivative of y um, as we go as we look back on our given equation uh, these two functions are both differentiable um, function in terms of y. So that is why we're going to use the product rule. So um, m of uh, m of x y, of course, then partial derivative of phi over partial of y plus phi of x y multiplied by the partial derivative of m over the partial derivative of y. And as well as the partial derivative of n, similarly on the process that we have done above with respect to the uh, partial derivative of x. So um, n of x, y, then multiply by the partial derivative of phi over uh, partial derivative of x. Okay. Okay. So plus phi of x y multiplied by the partial derivative of n over the partial derivative okay i don't know how to, how to write the exact um um okay here it is partial derivative of x so so based on our assumption as you can see this is now our um this is now where we where where we derive so m of x y with uh, partial derivative of phi over partial derivative of y plus phi x y partial derivative of m over partial derivative of y is now equal to n x of y okay then multiply by partial derivative of phi over partial derivative of x plus phi x of y multiply by partial derivative of n over partial derivative of x. Hence, we now, uh, by this uh, equation that we arrive, we now come to a conclusion that partial derivative of, of uh, m star over partial derivative of y is equal to partial derivative of n star over partial derivative of x. This time, let us now consider the function of phi x, y times f of f if this function is an integrating factor to our, to our given differential equations, the first step now that we're going to do is that to multiply this on the given uh, differential equation. So uh, here now, it will, the, our function becomes like this. So m of x, 
y dx then oh uh, okay i'll just put dx uh, on the last part times phi of x y times f of f dx plus n of x y times phi of x y times f of f dy is equals to zero okay so our equation is quite long so <clears throat> um let us now assume that these terms okay will be called as alpha okay and uh likewise also on this term will be called as uh, beta now let us um, show the partial derivative of alpha over the partial derivative of y and uh, this time let us first uh, uh, group these two functions with the function of phi and the function f so that we could easily find this uh this term so again as what we did earlier uh the function of m and the function of the group where phi is be belongs this both function is differentiable function in terms of y so that is why we're going to use again product rule so the function uh, the the partial of alpha over the partial of y now is now e equals to m of x y partial of phi of x y f of f okay f of f over the partial of y plus copy the the function which is uh, we group the function of phi multiplied by the function of f of f okay then the partial uh the partial derivative of m of x and y over the partial of y okay so let us now simplify this um uh, so the partial derivative of alpha over the partial derivative of y now is equals to m x of y and now as you can see we have two functions here and we will use again the product rule so this is now to be uh, this is now to multiply with phi um, x of y, x y, phi of x y, partial derivative of f of f over partial of y plus f of f partial of phi of x and y over partial of y, okay, close, plus this function square uh the phi of x y f multiply by f of f then multiply by the partial derivative of m x y over 2y now <clears throat> uh let us look at this uh remember that uh this will become zero why because uh let us we recall since uh, the function of x of y is equals to k. Remember, k is constant. And of course, uh, the derivative of um, constant is equals to zero. So automatically, uh, as, we, as we proceed on the simplification of this, it will, it will now become f, m, or, I mean m of x, y, multiply by these whole terms here becomes zero. Okay. Then plus f of f partial derivative of phi over partial derivative of y then plus this function here okay so phi of x y that one multiply by the function of f then multiply by partial of m x y over okay so it, it's uh i mean this will now becomes <clears throat> this will now becomes partial of m over partial of y okay so it's really quite long m of x y times m f of f times partial derivative of phi over partial of y plus phi x y multiplied by f of f 
times partial derivative of m of partial of y. Then, here we now arrive on our final uh, uh, final definition, the final um, equation, or the partial alpha of partial y is now equal to uh, m of x, okay, m of x, y, multiplied by f, uh, no, no, because we're going to factor out the f of f, the function of f, multiply by derivative of p over derivative of y plus function of p x y multiply by function uh, partial of m over partial of y multiply by this f of f. Okay, so after we consider the alpha, now let us now consider beta. So uh, we will now show the partial derivative of beta with respect to partial derivative of x. So remember, we have to group these two function here, the function of phi and the function of f. And uh, we have now we have now two functions, a group, this first group function and the function of n. So therefore, again, we will be using the product rule. So the n of x, y times the par partial of the phi, x y multiplied by f of f okay uh okay over the partial of x plus the partial of f the partial of v x y multiplied by f of f okay times the partial of n of x y over the partial of x now the x over here we can just automatic uh take it out okay uh okay as we're going to simplify this um the n of uh, x y remember this is again a product rule so it will now become uh, phi of x y multiplied by partial of f of f over partial of x plus f of f partial of phi x y over partial of x okay quantity then uh, plus this entire uh, function uh, entire terms here the phi of x y okay of f times the I have to quantity this the partial of n over partial of x so the equation now becomes n of x y the partial of uh, no quantity of v x y then again this is now becomes zero since I've just uh, uh, recalled to you a while ago that f of x y is equal to k and derivative of k is, is equal to zero automatically becomes zero plus the function the f the function of f of f uh, multiplied by fun, uh, the partial of p over 2x quantity plus again this uh, entire uh, uh, terms f of f then partial of n over partial of x okay so uh, this is now the this is not the final answer of the partial beta over partial x which is now the n of x y multiplied by f of f partial of v over partial of x plus v of x y f of f partial of n over partial of x they have common terms that we are about to factor out so we have to fa factor out it now n of x y partial of v over partial of x plus v of x y partial of n over partial of x this will be in a quantity multiplied by f of f okay so let us let us recall our pre on our previous assumption that the partial m star is equal over partial y is equals to partial n n star over 
partial x. So this is uh, this equation or the answer of this is uh, as we answered it a while ago, it is now m function of m of x and y multiplied by partial of phi over partial y plus phi okay phi x and y partial of m over partial of y is equals to n x and y partial of phi over partial x then um, plus phi x and y partial of n over partial of x and if this um uh, this equation on the uh, left side and the right side, this uh, inter equation will be multiplied by function of f, okay? And uh, let us see what would be the result of this. So simply, the inter uh, terms will multiply by f of f on the left side of the equation, and even on the right side, the same as well, multiply by the f of f. So it will now equal to m of x and y partial of... 2y partial phi over partial y plus phi of xy partial m over partial y uh, we will quanti uh, we will just we will put that in terms on a quantity multiply by f of f is equals to n x of y partial phi over partial x plus phi x of y partial n over partial x we will also quantity d you put this in a quantity multiply by f of f okay so we derive this uh, equation and if you remember this notation and even this notation on the right uh first on the left this notation is equals to the partial derivative of alpha over partial of y then even the left oh we will not forget the equation sign and even on this left is equals to the partial derivative of beta over partial x you can see there this this is just the same terms so therefore we will erase this first we will now arrive at our conclusion that the phi of x and y multiplied by function of f is an integrating factor Welcome to our uh, second problem, which is our given equation is y prime plus 2y is equal to 0, where this, equa this equation must satisfy on the indicated condition where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1 in red. Okay, so here is the process. The first thing that we have to do is we have to change the, d the y prime into dy over dx. Okay, so dy over dx plus 2y is equal to 0. Actually, our given problem is just very easy because the technique that we're going to use here is the variable separable technique on the, this given differential equation. So after that, we have to multiply dx on both sides of the equation. So therefore, it becomes now dy plus 2y dx is equal to 0. Okay, so... Uh, uh, as I said, we are going to use the variable separable. So we are we are now going to separate the same variable on uh, uh, on the other side and uh, and of course on the other side as well. So uh, so since dy is here, so we have to uh, go with this term dy plus two dx is equals to zero. Then uh, the method, uh, as the method is concerned, as far as the method is concerned, we have not to simply simply integrate all of the terms. So of course, integration of dy over y is equals to L in y plus integration of two x dx is equals to two x is equals to c. This is now our c. And uh, um, c is means constant and uh, we can uh, we can indicate c here as c1. Okay, so after that, I have to transfer the C1 on the left side and 2x on the right side. So it becomes a L and Y uh, minus C1 is equal to negative 2x. As I said, C1 is constant, so we can change this to add any form as long as it is constant. So L and Y in this, in this, in this case or in this situation, I'll have to change 
C1 into plus ln C. Okay, so minus 2x. And after that, by the principle of uh, um, natural logarithm, when there is the addition of ln, it becomes now ln Cy is equal to negative 2x. Okay, so bear it in your mind that this equation can, could only be the same as Cy is equals to e raised to negative 2x. Okay. So after that, we have to divide C on both sides. So Y is equals to 1 over C multiplied by E negative 2X. Why I, uh, I use this form Y over C? Because again, as I've said, 1 over C is constant. And we can change that by Y is equals to, again, C uh, multiplied by E raised to the, the negative 2X. So since we, we were given for... A condition where x is equals to 0 and y is equals to 100 and we have to simply to uh, substitute that condition. So since y is 100, 100 is equals to c, e raised to negative 2, the, the, the uh, value of x is equals to 0 and we have to do this so that we could find the value of c. So therefore it becomes 100 is equals to c, e and raised to 0. So... Uh, remember that when e is raised to 0, it is automatically be equals to 1. So c now is equals to 100. So um, uh, we now arrive to the value of c. Therefore, on the given equation that we had, uh, this one, it becomes now y is equals to 100 e raised to the negative 2x. So this is now our particular solution on the given problem. Okay, so we are now on our problem number three, and the equation given is x y prime minus y is equal to the square root of x squared minus y squared. So the first thing that we have to do with this is that we have to divide uh, x on all on uh, both sides. So of course we consider to divide this of all the terms within that equation. So uh, the the equation becomes now y prime minus y over x is equals to the square root of x squared minus y squared over x okay so remember what we're going what we have to define here is um we have to find the general solution of this so this denominator x in the right side on the right side of the equation we have to combine this inside of the square root so it becomes now y prime minus y over x is equals to the square root of x squared minus y squared over x squared okay so we simply just combine this inside of the square root so after that it becomes now y prime minus y over x is equals to the square root of 1 since they have common denominator of x squared so x squared over x squared is equals 1 minus y squared over x squared okay so this is now uh our the, the equation becomes so how we are going to proceed this is that the technique that we're going is the homogeneous uh technique in solution in finding solution general solution of the differential equation so as, uh, as all we know, the homogeneous using this condition. So we have to let y is equals to ux. So it is just also the same as u is equals to y over x. So we have to find the derivative of y. So dy now is equals to u dx plus uh, x du. So by this condition, we have to fit this on the problem equation that we have so as we are going to proceed y prime minus since uh, y over x is also defined as u so we uh, so um the y over x now becomes u is equals to the square root of one minus then also we also we can define this by square root both side so uh, it now becomes u squared is equals to y squared over x squared. So it's just the same with the term inside of the square root. So instead of y squared over x squared, we're going to use the u squared. Okay, 
So where why we are why we use this condition because later on we're going to use the variable separable uh, technique. So after this, uh, we change dy y prime into dy over dx. So dy over dx minus u is equal to the square root of y minus u squared. Okay, in order for me, in order for this equation that dx uh, will be eliminated here, so we have to uh, multiply dx both sides. So the equation now becomes dy minus u dx equals square root of 1 minus u dx. Okay, so dy here is, uh, we have dy here which is uh, defined also on our homogeneous definition. So let's just simply substitute dy. So dy becomes u dx plus x du minus u d uh, okay i'll have to transfer the u dx on the left side okay so it equals to one minus u square dx plus u dx as i said i transferred the negative u dx on the right side so we have uh, we find a common uh terms that is subject that is subject to eliminate so we have to eliminate u dx okay so that's our principle so x uh, the remaining now a terms on the equation it becomes x du is equals to square root of 1 minus u squared dx as i said a while ago that as we are going to proceed this uh, solution we are now going to use the variable separable so we have to separate the variable of x and the variable of, of u since we are using u here okay so um uh it becomes now du over 1 minus u squared uh and equals to dx over x we have to combine the same variables so that we could uh, we can proceed this solution into the variable separable and uh, to be followed with integration so i have to transfer dx over x on the left side so du equals the square root of one minus u squared minus dx over x is equals to zero so we have now to integrate so uh do you it Integration of d over square root of 1 uh, minus u squared is an identity. It is uh, one of the identity in trigonometry, which is equivalent to uh, arc sine, arc sine u. Then, uh, of course, the derivative, the integral, I mean, of dx over x is ln x is equals to c. Okay. So, uh, uh, remember that we define u on uh, the definition above so it becomes our sine arc sine is equals to y over x okay then uh, uh, after that minus ln x is equals to c remember okay uh, c is constant so i may define this as c1 but uh, this c uh, but this c1 could also be becomes ln z so how so um sine arc sine of y over x is equal to so i have to transfer the ln x on the right side so it becomes now ln x plus as i said c1 is a constant and we can change that into ln c any other form because it is constant so with the principle of ln addition of ln sine negative one y over x is equals to ln c x okay is it it then um so that uh, in order for us to, to transfer this arc sine on the right side, it becomes now y over x is equals to sine. Okay, sine, sine of ln cx. Okay, uh, no, no, that's it, absolute value. Okay, so multiplying x on the right side, y now is equals to sine. Okay, no, 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 it becomes now y is equals to x sine ln c x so this is now our final answer the general equation of the given problem okay so this is now the solution of our fourth problem but uh, before that let us first define what is the given equation so our given equation here is sine x y prime plus 
cos x y is equals cos 2 x in which we have to satisfy to, to satisfy this differential equation in the uh, given condition where y of pi over 2 is equals two and a half so here is now the process the first thing that we have to do now is we have to divide sine x of all of the terms within the equation so divide by sine x uh, we have to do this so that to simplify our given equation so sine x of all the equation of all the terms within the equation so the equation now becomes y prime plus cos x over sine x y is equals to cos 2x over sine x now if you have to consider the second term of the equation cos x over sine x is what we call an identity one of the identity of the trigonometric function so to simplify it more y prime plus cotangent x then y is equals to cos 2x over sine x okay so if you have to well, if you observe that the given question now becomes in the standard form when when a linear uh, differential equation technique will be used okay so since this is not the, in the standard form we have to find the uh, integrating factor so we know as we know that how to find integrating factor we have to uh, we have to use this equation e derivative i mean integral of the p of x in the standard form which is the integral of cot x dx so therefore e is equals now to ln sine x and this equation is the same as sine x so therefore from the given um from the given simplified uh, equation that we had uh, y prime plus cot x y is equals to cos 2x over sine x will be multiplied by the integrating factor which is sine x so multiply the sine x on both sides so what will happen next to the uh, uh to our solution it becomes now sine x y prime plus sine x cot x y is equals to uh cancel the sine x so it becomes now cos 2x so remember that the rules uh that the rule of the linear differential equation technique is that we have to to derive uh we have to derive the integrating factor and the cot x uh, uh no the sine x y here okay and the y okay that's not uh that's wrong so we have to multiply sine x and y so it now becomes y sine x okay is equals to the integral of cos 2x dx then after that simply it becomes y sine x is equals to how we how we are going to integrate this cos 2x of course we have to let u be 2x okay then du is now 2x dx so okay so transfer the no no that is not 2x but it's just 2 dx so therefore dx now is equals du over 2 okay <clears throat> so uh, to make it short integral of cos 2x is equals now to uh no no i have to take out this integral sign so it it, it will now equals to one half sine 2x then of course don't forget i have to erase, erase this verse but don't forget to put your plus c okay so um this is now our equation where we have to satisfy first on the condition the condition was uh y pi over 2 is equals one half this condition implies also that if um x is pi over 2 then y is equals to one half okay so we have now to um substitute this to the uh to the variable that we have on the equation so y y is one half multiplied by sine and sine here is pi over 2 is equals to one half sine to um pi over 2 plus c 
why we came on uh, to this procedure is because we have to find the z so after that we have substitute remember that sine pi over 2 is equals to 1 so 1 half multiplied by 1 is equals to 1 half and sine 2 of pi over 2 is equals automatically to 0 so plus c so automatically by simplifying this c now is equals to 1 half times 1 which is 1 half so uh we are now comes to the uh to the value of c and we have now just simply to put it on the equation that we had just arrived uh, uh a while ago so our equation now becomes y sine x is equals to um one half sine two x then the c plus one half because c is one half then uh to simplify it more we have to multiply two both sides so it becomes now two y sine x is equals to sine two x plus one okay we have to divide two sine x both side so our y now is equals to 1 plus sine 2x over 2 sine x which is this is now our general i mean particular solution on the given problem Okay, welcome to the fifth and the last problem and we are going to show to you the complete solution with this. So our given equation is an equation of the radius of curvature which is r is equals to y prime squared plus 1 quantity raised to 3 halves over y double prime. And uh, we have to satisfy, to satisfy this equation that will arrive on the equation of a circle. So... Uh, as we go on with the process, we will have a quite long solution, but still we will arrive on the correct answer. So the first thing that we have to do is that the right terms of the equation will be will become will become one. So how to do that? Uh, we just simply multiply the i the y double prime to r, and this the numerator terms will be becomes the denominator of the of the left terms of the equation. So it uh, goes like this. So r equal uh, r then uh, multiply by y double prime over y prime squared plus one quantity raised to three halves is now equals one so uh the next thing that we have to do is that we have to define uh we have uh to let u equals to y prime so that uh we will put this uh, um, this definition on the equation, and then we can see easily integrate the given equation. So, so du over dx is equals to y double prime. Okay, so let's substitute as what we have defined. R, R, then there is the double prime, and double prime here is equal to d over dx. So du over dx. Okay, this is u, not y, du over dx. But remember, we have the denominator and we have y prime here, which is equivalent to u. So u squared plus 1 quantity raised to, and our uh, exponent here is 3 over halves, is equals to 1. So we have to transfer dx on the uh, right side of the equation. So it, it, it will now become r over u squared plus 1 quantity raised to three halves okay uh, i'll show that it is clean then is equal uh no uh d will be on uh, on uh, the side of r then equals to dx so by this form we can now easily integrate both sides so um okay uh this is very look familiar as we are going to base on the table of integrals these uh terms uh, integral the integration of this term becomes r u over square root of u squared plus one then is equals to of course the integration of dx is x then plus c we don't we don't uh, forget the c but in this case the c here must be indicated as minus c why so that 
we can make sure that we will arrive on the equation of a circle. Remember, C can transform to any form because this is constant. Okay, so uh, we have to, to simplify more the equation. So R U is equals to uh, square root of U squared plus 1 multiplied by X minus C. Okay, C1. Okay, so we have to square both sides. Uh, no, um, we have to square, I, yes, square both sides. Okay, we have to square both sides. So it becomes now R squared. U squared is equals to U squared plus 1. The square root of U squared plus 1 squared. Then X, uh, no, no, X minus C1 squared. Okay, so as you can see, we can uh, we will now automatically cancel the square root because it has been squared the entire quantity or the entire terms. So r squared u squared is equals now u squared plus one multiplied by x minus c one. Okay, c uh um okay c squared okay like that. So. Um, you know, what we're going to do now is we have to distribute this term on the u squared plus 1. So r squared u squared is equals now to u squared x times u squared times x minus c1 squared. Okay. Then plus this term multiplied by 1 x minus c1 squared. Okay. So what we're going to do next is that um we have to transfer this quantity on the left side so that it's because they have a common terms that we could uh, take it out so r2 u squared uh then uh, minus uh u squared x minus c1 squared is equals to x minus c1 squared so as, as i said there is a common terms common term which is u squared so u squared will be um uh will be factor out so r squared uh minus okay so that uh, the we could use proper uh parenthesis inside c1 squared okay so um is equals to x minus c1 square okay so by this we have to transfer this term to uh, to become the denominator of the terms on the right side of the equation so u squared now is equals to x minus c1 squared over r squared minus x minus c1 squared okay okay so this is it now so after this we have to take the square root on both sides. Okay, so square root of u and the square root of the inter of the inter terms of the right side of the equation. Okay, so it becomes now u is equals to, of course, all the square roots of the numerator and the denominator uh, will be taken away. It's because of the square root. So x minus c1 over r squared minus x. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, of course, the denominator, uh, it remains the square root. Okay, so the square root of r squared, okay, I'll make it clean, wait for a while. So the denominator becomes now um, uh, the square root of r squared minus x minus c1 squared. Okay. Okay, so after that, so we have no space anymore, so I'll have to erase above. Erase. Okay, we will continue. Okay, so uh, remember our equation now becomes u is equals to x minus c1 over the square root of r, r squared minus c uh, no no minus quantity is that quantity x minus c1 squared 
Okay, so um, since on our equation, on our definition, since u is equals y prime, and we have to note that r is element of real number, hence our equation now becomes y prime is equals to x minus c1 all over the square root of r squared minus x minus c1 squared. Okay, so um, we are not going to integrate this. Okay, we're not going to integrate this. So by integrating, we have to like that put integrating factor and uh, no the, the sign of integration so therefore i have to erase this more okay so therefore uh the integration of that of of course uh, the integration of y prime is equals y is equals uh, before i go ahead with that let's first uh simplify the the terms on the, the right side of the equation so let v let v is equals to r squared minus x minus c1 squared. Then, of course, the dv of this is equals to negative 2 c minus c1 then dx. Okay, so therefore, negative dv over 2 is equals to c. No, it's, it is equals to x minus c1 dx okay did you follow so uh as you can see there of course uh uh we we we, we should we should uh, not forget to put dx here because we're putting uh, the integrating sign integration sign so commonly we have now by putting the condition that we have so y the integration of y prime is equals to y then equals uh, to integration of one half then dv over square root of v okay so um okay i have to erase everything okay so our y now is equals to negative one half times two over one and uh, v one half plus c and we identify it as c2 why we add c2 here because and every time we have our integration we have to add C. So after that, uh, there will be cancellation of 2. Y is equals to the negative since V, as we defined V above, R squared minus C minus uh, C1 squared. So therefore, it becomes now negative square root of R squared minus quantity of um, X minus C1 squared plus C2. And I'll have to transfer C2 on the left side of the equation. So it now becomes my y minus C2 yeah, as one quantity. Then square root of R squared minus X minus C1 squared quantity. And then um, uh, in order for us to take away the square root of this term, we have to square both sides. So it becomes now y minus c square c two squared is equals to uh, <clears throat> um, r squared minus x minus c one squared. It is equivalent, okay? Equi no no. It is also equals to uh, x minus c one squared this is it i'll transfer the, I'll, i i transfer these terms on the left side then plus y minus c2 squared is equals to r squared so let me define that h is equals to c1 and um, k is equals to c2 then equation will become uh, c i don't know the equation the, our final answer for this is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equals r squared so definitely we derive on the equation of a circle